I think the right thing to do is to talk about the patch because this is like, we can talk about the Brutus Sword all we want, but I think mo almost more important than the Brutus Sword itself is the context in which it launched and the kind of, yes, the, how to describe it? The, the brass balls on Blizzard to not have someone in the control room with an emergency stop button. Because that's really what it is, right? Because this just went, this just, this patch went live. And so did the Brutus Yes, Sword. so, right. Basically, this, in terms of quality of release, is one of the worst patch releases they have ever had, if not the worst. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, you know, it didn't, didn't impact me, whatever. Um, what we can say for people who take Mythic Plus seriously, quite a few things ended up going wrong. For people who play, yeah, for people who play the raid, the existing raid, lots of disconnects, lots of bugs with bosses. Stuff that meant that if your raid night was like Wednesday or Thursday, you would not always actually even have a playable experience, right? The new raid that was added was unfinished. It, well, it was it was finished, but it wasn't finished in the sense that it was playable from beginning to end, but it wasn't finished. But it wasn't it was tuned. It wasn't tuned. Yeah, the, the tuning was was not done like yeah. ludicrously so. Mm. So I guess that's like two big features. Uh, you know, so Mythic Plus really damage the existing raid, big damage. The new raid, big damage. So that's already not great. Uh, there's the actual design of the event. Uh, there's the Codex of Chromie as well, which is non, it's nothing. Which they made. They made that. I, I am. Somehow, some way. I'm shocked that they released that. I am not. Okay, yes, yeah, sorry. I, I'm not, I, I'm not I am not shocked they released um, it, but I'm shocked that, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm just not shocked. I'm, just, I'm, I'm shocked at something that's floating around there. I don't get it. I don't... It's like you get into games to make game. There's yeah. no game there. There's nothing. Yeah, it's the frustrating part of... Just go here and then else. run through the balls. Because I think there's two versions of run through the balls, mm. but... There's fly through the balls and there's run around the balls. Yeah, so you'll have that. Mm. And then you go to the bones and you stop some ritual at the bones. Then you kill Kalzad and it's done. There's, like, no mechanics, really. There's no interactivity. Like, d dynamism. There's no loss state. There's no... Yeah. There, there's, there's no victory, either. It's just... You just go through the motions. Yeah, I don't I don't particularly... I, uh, I, I don't want to talk shit about David Cage and his games too much, but the fact that, you know, the idea of a game not having a failure state is really insane. It's kind of like, it kind of just goes, well, what's the point? I mean, obviously you can get, like, uh, big experiences that are fun and interesting and stuff, even without a failure state. But when you're making a game and you're designing a game, you would, generally speaking, want to have some sort of game there. Some sort of win, some sort of lose. I mean, even what's, what's a win they, it's not they have that. Yeah, like right. LFR, you can wipe. Obviously, that's had issues in uh, in the past yeah. with, uh, like, Nizoth and uh, the Jailer and stuff like that. Being Was it the Jailer? I remember Nazoth specifically was an absolute bell end of a boss for LFR. Um, I mean, you even you it. look at their look at their graphic here. Uh, okay, no, you, you don't have it up on on our notion. Uh, it's it was in the first post. It's just like the big promotional graphic they have oh, for this it. One, yes. You know, with their oh lovely big expensive key art and yeah. like classic time walking. That's there. That works. Cool. Yeah, that works. Yeah. Um, Gates of Anchorage. Number one, it's not called that. Yep. <laughs> uh, it has zero, like, that's tie. Just, that's because Codex of Chromie doesn't mean anything. Yeah, but it has zero tie to, like, Anchorage. It's there, but... Yeah. It's there, but it, it, it there's no homage to it. Except for the fact it's in Silithus. Yeah, it's... It's actually an anti-homage because more different things from all over the place are there as well. Are there instead. That's, so. Yeah, it's, it's strange. You mm -hmm. don't ring the gong at the end. Yeah, you do that just in the event. It's, it's just there. Crack. It's bizarre. Yeah. I... I truly... 
My only explanation is that it's like Awakening the Machine, and this is something that most viewers won't know. Awakening the Machine was supposed to be, like, proper real content. There were achievements, it had loads and loads of, like, different levels. I enjoyed uh, it on beta. I genuinely, I genuinely had fun because it was, like powers. it was very different, but it had more little buffs, it had more mechanics, it had more things that it had waves that went up to 50 and beyond, had the achievements for those, and it started to, like, as I played it as um, a rep -haw during my beta testing and it was genuinely I was like this is this this is fun this is interesting I don't know how I'm going to do this on live on my DK because I was relying on my paladin healing oh that'll be a fun challenge I'll have to play differently and do things like that and then it launched and I went what the fuck is this this yes. is not what I played they completely so ultimately they weren't able to finish that they completely gutted it and now awakening the machine is there structurally so they can say it's a feature that they shipped I don't think anyone enjoys awakening the machine it takes away from the game because it ends up being a weekly checklist item that you don't enjoy and that you have to at least with some of the weekly checklist things you'll do them anyway whereas you got to go out of your way to do awakening the machine and if you want assembly of the deeps uh reputation you know you'll you'll, you'll do that uh yeah so the, and in a world where dell's gearing was a thing and there was, like, lots of solo gameplay. You can see why they wanted to do Assembly of the Deeps with its 50 levels and its achievements and stuff like that. Because mm -hmm. then you could have, you know, got your character geared up and tells and oh, look! There's, a, you know, a wave-based thing. Maybe it's got a challenge mode. I have to assume with Codex of Chromie, they had some plan that has just been completely stripped away. Something like that, otherwise... Well, it's weird, right? So even from even from day to day, there's like, where's the variation? Well, Not there, there's, the a little, there's a little bit. Yeah, but... a little. Not that variation would help, hmm. because the problem is it's fundamentally bad and has no purpose. And people are like, oh, what do you mean the problem is it's bad? That, fair. Not good. <laughs> Words. Um, your input has got very little relationship to, to the output. Yeah, it's You're like there uh, a massive team. You don't need to mm. contribute. It doesn't really give you a job to do. Like, there's a version of Codex of Chromie. They could, you could even do it like time rifts, zone wide, give players within the raid group little objectives to fly around and do. Yeah, there's a thing where they could kind of cook there, and yeah, you could end up yeah. having something that, even if it doesn't have to be some hard game mode, which I'm not necessarily asking for. Yeah, because they solved that problem, right? Because the like as as far back as the like Stu in Dragonflight, you land, and obviously a lot of people figured out that with enough people, you don't need to contribute and still max out. Yeah, which is kind of a different problem there. To yeah, but here like, it could have been fine because they knew the raid size. Yeah, but they know the size. They know the they know they can they can handle that. They can kind of go okay. Well, we'll split you up into groups, something like that. You need some sort of tank or some sort of healer or something, anything, eh, literally anything. Uh, but instead, it's just like eh, yeah, you, you just kill load mobs and that's it. And it feels like the awakening machine problem again because it is just and we don't trust our players to do anything, so we'll let them kill mobs that have five HP and go about their day. They're like, oh, Jesus. I can't imagine any developer is ha happy with that as a brief to implement something. It cannot challenge anyone, even remotely. It cannot have any texture, any flavor. The best you can do is spawn in interesting mobs. <laughs> that, And you can spawn them in in interesting ways. You cannot do anything else. And I feel like that ends up being like the brief. It reminds me of Warfronts, just auto content. See, Warfronts weren't auto content. You'll know that if you did them at any point that wasn't when everyone was bombing in. Whenever you do the heroic ones or whenever you do them with, with very few players. The heroic ones actually yeah. could risk being fun when you were challenged and you yeah. had to, yeah. you so, to use the mechanics. So if you do them, if you do them now, uh, whenever there's like, you know, there's very few people doing them, and you know you're obviously you're like over leveled or whatever so you're kind of new and and stuff but you still have to do the mechanics because it still has those like those like uh, states mm. it, almost in the same way you know whenever there's raid bosses and you have to do the mechanics even if you're like way too above like yeah. nr and Taurus. i know people don't like that because it's a bit funky but it is like there's a there's a gameplay and even soloing that uh, the warfronts had i'm not screwing, i'm not turning around saying they were good or well implemented or anything i'm just saying that they 
there was there was effort put into that and it didn't pan out because of a variety of reasons but ultimately like that was a game mode that had elements to it that worked like you know the the point was to be a recreation of the rts mechanics mm -hmm. And it sort of slightly maybe was, just didn't pan out super well with uh, with everyone else. My worry is just like, are we ever going to get something like Horrific Visions again? Uh, no, because Horrific Visions... It's all uh, just an eight-week slot. Because Horrific Visions was Horrific Visions. And then, after Horrific Visions, they made Torghast, which was the Horrific Visions follow-up. Because they used the same, uh, the same, like... Uh, even pro though progression mechanic even thing. though it's completely different and i'm sure they learned all the wrong lessons from both <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so it's like there's no game mode that's because like obviously delves was a big focus this time right and so fair enough delves is a big focus yeah. and for the right. most part outside big of, thumb up for me yeah outside of the 9 to 11 uh like reward stuff and outside of a lot of the tuning issues early which obviously like everything requires an insane amount of tuning all the time but Dells were like the big effort and you can see like where that effort went and where it was worth it yeah and where people enjoy them and play them and have fun like that but it's like those come out and then they can't do anything to that effort again because that's an expansion feature so it's kind of like hey shit what do we do what do we do can we get patch features that are anything like that i don't know i think i don't know my what, what's really in my head is this would be a better patch if they actually didn't ship things. That's the most damning thing. And you're completely correct because if this didn't have... if this, I'm, I'm going to say, if this didn't have Corax and it didn't have the Codex of Chromie, this would... Corax is always there, though. It's just a sort of... Yeah. They yeah, flick but, it back but, on. But, but it's in the weekly for your tokens. Well, you yeah, gotta do it for your yeah. tokens. And I did it on Friday. And I didn't regret it in the grand scheme of things because I got my token. Yippee! Woo! But I was fucking bored of tears. And I immediately, as soon as I finished it, I all deferred. And do you know why? Because people have been maxed it because it's just like AV was when it was uh, kind of gamed. It was right, everyone sprint to the other end of the map. See who kills the boss first. And like, where's the where's the fun of Wait, that? Your Corax was that? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, I got into one and it was like a proper long. It's just massive war. Oh no! Oh, it no. didn't seem like anything would ever get accomplished. But I was just there, hunter in the back line, sniping people, and I mean, it wasn't super engaging, but I was actually having enough. Yeah, I was. I was happy enough. I no, I no, I, I was a wrestler dude, and I sometimes had to maybe heal a little bit. Because we just sprinted through all the NPCs and did the PVE part, and then we won. But and I got oh my god, like seven hundred honor, so I got my quest done in like fifteen minutes. I'm, I'm but so it was confused. 50, it was that's what Corax is supposed to not be. Yeah, well, it fucking was. Okay, weird. Well, it was, and uh, I'm like, okay, well, ignoring Corax then. But like, if it didn't ship the Codex, because I don't want to do the Codex again, which means I'm going to be annoyed next week when I I'm told to do it again for more coins. Yeah. So. It's like content, overall content. I think they really... There's a lot that they didn't think through and I guess it only really makes sense in the context of the tokens and the reward psychology. I mean, like having Blackrock debts, that should be good. Um, I was out of action on our normal raid night. You guys did yeah. it. I'm I'm pretty sure Heroic ran into Heroic being what it was like at launch, but yeah. I think the rest was good. Yeah, BRD is a good raid that's unfinished. There is a lot to love in it, and great job from the team on it in a variety of ways. There's some really interesting fights that I think are great, especially in terms of the concept of being reimagined versions. The last fight in particular is really cool. The You know the gauntlet where you get the torches? The end of BRD, they made that into a that is a raid encounter and it is it's a, a maybe a very slight tiny bit uh, long but it is genuinely like a brilliant reimagining of that so like the encounter design team did excellent work there just a shame they weren't given the time to fucking finish it because we would have loved to do it in heroic but because of the way it's scaled for uh lower group sizes you're like 12 because it's 10 to 15 we only had 12 and the incoming damage from the first boss's uh, raid ride was fucking brutal, as well as a bunch of um, 
of like health values being like a little bit higher than they should have been for our group comp even though we were like two healing with uh 12 people it was just wild like uh well and very shortly after that humongous nerfs yeah humongous nerfs humongous nerfs and like this is like we we are progging heroic answer answer rack we were we got a pull to like sub 10 percent last week and then raid ended otherwise we would have killed her that day yeah uh so it was straight up like this is really quite uh this is really quite scuffed it's really quite scuffed that we wanted to do the thing that we should be able to do because it's the same item level rewards and i was just like ah we'll do normal instead and we still had fun we still we enjoyed normal it was a little bit easy sometimes um well, given the gear given of that was, group, that's... Yeah, it was a little bit easy, but it was, like, it wasn't normal easy, uh, which is just kind of awkward, even though we had to, we got to enjoy all of that stuff. So it, was, so it was good, just I really wish we could have done the work. It's like, if they had, if they had intended this and then scaled up the... What do you call it? And then scaled up the... What's it called? The, like, items and rewards a little mm. bit. So there may be a midpoint between heroic for the normal raids, or a little bit better than normal. Oh, sorry, mean. a little bit harder, a little bit better than normal for the normal raid, because it was harder, and then kept heroic the same. But maybe instead of starting at six ten, it was like six nineteen the whole way through, or something along those lines. Same track, just higher up. Then it would have felt a little bit more rewarding. So it's like VRD is a fun one because it's a great raid, but it our experience of it on two one day after patch launch for EU. And launch day is important. Yeah, that that's was, when like, Blizzard yeah. is marketing to get you to play their game. Yeah, it's like I'm really, really starting to, I'm starting to learn to not play World of Warcraft whenever a patch launches. I think this is like that's the, this what, is the standard being, American experience yeah. that we're fi- <laughs> we yeah. finally got because it was so bad that even the American paid beta wasn't able to save us. Yeah, like <laughs> I'm be I'm being taught to wait, which yeah. is. I mean, obviously, that's like a general video game thing now as well, largely and unfortunate, but it fucking sucks because they get all their marketing and they get everyone in and go, ah, it's time to play the game. There's a new content and you go, I don't trust it. I don't trust. I simply don't trust it anymore. And I, um, I don't even, I, I don't know how much I'll play this event because I don't like the way to get tokens. Mm-hmm.